saber se eu tava mesmo dormindo Assim que eu acordei saiu falando e eu fiquei só ouvindo Dá risada, conta história, vai dormir mais feliz No outro dia me acorda, me pergunta o que fiz Logo entende mansinho e me faz cafuné Sente que eu tô na dela e consegue o que quer Eu sou menino dela e ela é minha menina Não mudaria nada porque ela me fascina Loucura da minha vida, ela não tava nos meus planos Nós somos parecidos Eu sou menino dela e ela é minha menina Não mudaria nada porque ela me fascina Loucura da minha vida, ela não tava nos meus planos Nós somos parecidos Ela é assim, mas eu amo Não, não, não Bom dia! Welcome to the ESnet and IP Technology Day uh, 2023. My name is Thomas Hogenmüller. I will guide you today through the, the event. Um, probably I need the, the clicker. Um, Um, before we start, I may introduce myself. I started uh, electrical engineering in uh, Germany, but also in China and also in Brazil, in Florianopolis. This may have some um, reason why we end up uh, today here. Um, if you want, I can tell you a little bit more about this, why we are here. Um, I started my career in Bosch in uh, 2004 working on power line communication, um, as well as uh, in flex free consortium on the physical layer. Um, after that, I moved to Palo Alto. Um, we have a research lab there. I was working on wireless sensor networks for automotive applications, as well as uh, non-automotive applications. was agriculture, was also windmills, um, etc. Since 2011, I'm working now in uh, Stuttgart again, and um, um, I was leading a, a group that was responsible for Ethernet standardization and also plenty of uh, product ideas, innovation ideas. If you want to see some results of that, you may stop our, at our booth in the exhibition area. Uh, since 2019, I'm uh, moved now to the business unit are responsible also for Comnet architectures, technologies, as well as for a bit of standardization. Uh, my interest still is uh, at the moment uh, high-speed sensors, cameras, radar sensors, um, looking if uh, we can get them uh, to the Ethernet network and uh, uh, get rid of this point-to-point -point communication directly to a vehicle computer. So zonal architecture is also one of my working areas. As well, of course, I'm uh, also dealing with uh, customers and also with uh, our suppliers. Um, so that's why I still try to have a very good relationship with uh, many of the semiconductor companies um, in order to give uh, uh, possibilities for the next uh, products to come. Um, this uh, event is the, the second event already in Brazil on, um, on Ethernet and uh, in particular automotive Ethernet. Uh, prior to this event, we had a uh, an standardization event at the Bosch campus in Campinas. Um, this is one picture of, of the team. So we had about uh, 60 participants and um, uh, also, we had some Brazilian uh, uh, people uh, and joining the, the event, so they got a very good glimpse on, on uh, how standards are made, um, how to build uh, uh, consensus on technical uh, um, decisions, and um, they also see why Ethernet is so stable and why we have so good standards. Um, nevertheless, we had also very good uh, Brazilian experience, we had a very, very, very good support uh, from the Brazilian team at Campinas. Um, it was a quite international experience. We had uh, people all over the world, from Japan, from Australia, North America, Europe, 
Um, so it was quite a good experience. But we didn't only work, we had also fun. So as you can see, we had a social event, and uh, we had uh, live music, we had a churrasco, Brazilian barbecue, and uh, I'm challenging you that we have tonight uh, hopefully an even better social event. So IEEE guys, they went on the stage singing all sorts of songs. Um, we had quite a fun time. I hope that we can uh, uh, beat this. Let's work on this. Also our Japanese colleagues, they contributed two new drinks. So if you want, you can ask probably tonight for Gotusan special. <laughs> it's a sake-based uh, drink, cocktail. You may want <laughs> to experience that. We are not stopping uh, there. We will have, uh, after this event, we will have uh, um, an um, open alliance all members meeting. Oliver will, uh, in the second, or uh, in the first break, he will talk a little bit more about this. So I'm inviting you also here, join us, see um, how the standards are made, how the ecosystem is growing. Um, now I'm going over the agenda quickly. You have find uh, the detailed agenda in your booklet. Um, so we will start now with uh, the keynote of uh, Axel Kirschbaum. Then we will uh, go over time-sensitive networking, safety and security, Yang, software-defined networking, and, uh, and the highlight of today will be, and this is a, a special for, for me, um, to have Bob Metcalf here. Welcome, Bob. Um, I'm very curious how this uh, workshop will be with him. As I uh, experienced one, once uh, with him in a, in a panel discussion, it can be a lot of fun. So be, make sure that you are here. Um, on the second day, we are going uh, to talk about network and architecture, server-oriented oriented, uh, architecture, application and higher layer connectivity. Then we also talk about hardware, file switch, microcontroller, last but not least, validation and test. And then we will conclude uh, the event. I have some uh, housekeeping information. So the exhibition area, um, you, you probably saw already. If you are looking for the bathroom, this is uh, if you go out on the left, you will find bathrooms here. Um, if you want to go looking for the bathroom here in uh, the auditorium, um, you basically get out and behind the, air, the staircase, you will find the, the bathroom. The dinner and lunch will be in the second floor. For the lunch, you will find at uh, your ticket, um, at uh, your badge, you will find uh, lunch tickets. Um, this is required to get uh, food there. Um, also, in, uh, when you go outside of the auditorium, you will find the speaker's corner, where you can meet um, for detailed discussion the speaker um, after the, each session. You can uh, talk in detail um, about the presentation and exchange more information. Um, also, as in any other big city, um, you should be um, very mindful about su your surroundings. Um, put your phone securely in your pocket. Don't wear visibly jewelry. Um, after sunset, it's better that you move by taxi or Uber and uh, whenever possible, walk in groups. I want to especially thank to um, the people that are behind this event that make it happen. So we have uh, two organizations, the steering committee and the program committee. It was uh, pretty much fun uh, to work with them to organize this event. A big thank you on all of them. There is a, a second uh, thank you to individuals, um, to Bob, that he made it to, to come to Brazil. For me, it was uh, amazing that uh, I requested, uh, sent him an, an uh, email, basically, um, to, told him why I want to go to Brazil, how he can contribute this, uh, this uh, ecosystem. And uh, his answer was, yes, I'm coming. 
and uh, not even he is coming uh, for the his event. He want he will be stay the entire two days. He is interested in what automotive is is or not is about. He would like really to know, um, yeah, where Ethernet is going now in this embedded world. And uh, I think you will have also fruitful discussions outside of the event. And also he uh, said this morning that he's really interested in visiting the exhibition area to see all the demonstrators and the real technology and have technical discussions. So please uh, provide him all the information. Um, Steve Carlson helped uh, also to make uh, uh, it happen to that Bob is um, accommodated here. And special thank also to uh, Rosalinda and Heather. They uh, are the two ladies at the regi registration um, that organized all this uh, uh, event with uh, all the food, presentation, technology, the AV technique. Everything is organized by the, these two ladies. And uh, also from uh, Bosch team in Campinas, there's a very special person. She helped us last week uh, significantly. This is Thais. She also helped uh, uh, here for the event, for the ship shipping process, for the bureaucracy of Brazil. Um, she was uh, quite a good help. And last but not least, I would also thank uh, to Diva Nilsson that helped us uh, to get the Brazilian flavor to this event and uh, to get also um, yeah, people uh, uh, from Brazil at joining this event. So now I would like uh, to introduce the first speaker, um, Axel Kirschbaum. He's a very special to me. He is the boss of my boss. Um, so I'm very curious to see what he understood, basically what my team is working on. So it's quite challenging probably for him. Let's see. Um, so Axel is uh, a vice president uh, for vehicle computers, gateways, and solar easy use. Um, prior of, of this uh, vice president position, he was responsible for Autosar software and middleware at Bosch. And prior to that, he was working on a powertrain or project lead for uh, electric uh, powertrain. Axel, yep. welcome to the stage. Thanks. Thanks. Ross is here. Good morning to everybody of you, and yeah, thanks for me to be here. Thank you all that I'm honored to give you the keynote speech. Thomas introduced myself, so 20 years experience, started a car multimedia, cluster instruments, all that nice infotainment, early, let's say, LVDS, whatever connections to the displays. Then I switched over to powertrain, adaptive autosar, standardization, and then at the end, I made it to now become the product lead for a vehicle computer and solar architectures. And we have one slogan where I come from and also Thomas. So our slogan is the power to network and connect. And it's technically, but it's also, let's say, connect people. And therefore, I'm happy being here. Also happy that Bosch had the chance to host you in this event, but also in the prior event. And now I would like to share what is our thoughts of the future and also let's say give this whole connectivity some kind of a frame that puts your activities which I really appreciate in a direct connection about the future of the vehicles, future of the infrastructure of the vehicles and also the future of our mobility. And that's why we are here and also be very open in the past decades, there have been a lot of, let's say, Ken, Lin, Flexray, most discussions that have been all, let's say, nice uh, proprietary solutions within automotive. But now it really becomes to a change from that old bus systems to the new and standardized Ethernet. And yeah, you are the core. You are shaping this new world. And therefore, let's start. I would like to start with what is the mega trend? Most of you know this. So we are really in a transformation for the whole mobility. So the space, so the mega trends, software, services, personalized, automated, connected, and electrified, that drives the whole story. Means in future, we dream of a software-defined vehicle. Software-defined, we get everyday updates. 
we have really a connected car that enables us really to find the right charging place, to be connected to our mobile, and really to have a car that is no longer old-fashioned, but it's really capable and also be some kind of a part in a network and an active member of a network. We face challenges of really have updates. We have to face challenges. We have to be secure and safety because we are driving. So it's not allowed to have a black screen or blue screen. It's not allowed that somebody hacks us and we are leaving the track. So we have special requirements in the car on safety and security and for sure also the efficiency. So we would like to have long distance rides with our cars. We do not want to have whatever one gigawatt uh, computing power in the car. We need really efficient solutions. We have to work with embedded ECUs. And that is the challenge also when it comes to Ethernet to find the right solution. And for sure also we have to deliver 10 years production, 15 years after production. So we have to focus on standards. If we develop individual solutions, proprietary solutions, it won't work. We have not a chance like in mobility that we terminate services after two years. It's just not possible. And therefore, we have to manage the complexity of having an active, updatable system that is safety, that is secure, but also from UX perspective, the end user should feel like being connected by a smartphone. That brings me to the change that is needed. So current architectures in the car, the CAN architectures, does not work or does or will not support the things I described needed for SDV. So it means we go to a more zonal oriented architecture. On the top layer, we have for sure the compute area. That's where all the data will be processed, connected to the cloud, and also, let's say, or to edge compute devices. And on the lower level, we have the zones, means ECUs connected via Ethernet backbone and all the sensors beyond. This architecture currently is not available in the cars. So currently we have 100 ECUs, via, let's say, I would say point-to-point -point connection via CAN and let's say a lot of historic driven solutions. And now we are about to change this with the new car lines because with the old architectures, all the left-hand topics described won't be possible. So that is very complex slide, but it shows how the world is developing about the next year. So I said we have to change. And here you see the change story of the top 25 OAMs with regards to that kind of vehicle infrastructure. Means we will have a transfer phase for changing the, the, the way how we have uh, the architecture, ECU architecture and comment in the car up to 2030. So every OAM changes individually uh, and we will have uh, e even in 2030 a mixture of one third traditional EE architecture. So it means OAMs that does not make the change or have legacy that is not uh, possible to switch. Then we have, we call this domain centralized. That is the first step that we put together functionality from motion, from uh, let's say compute, others, put the domains in the car together. But also the vehicle centralized means also putting all the data together to one compute layer and really have then one area where we control all the functionalities in the car. That is the E architecture and the top and, uh, and button you see here the, the ECUs. So as said, we will have compute layers on top. Therefore, we talk about pattern trio, pattern duo, pattern uno. That's where we say either you have three main computers in a car or even two or one. That is the way how the OEMs, uh, let's say, integrate the functionalities and the software in, let's say, boxes. And that's the home of all the application software. And on the lower level, we call it zone ECUs. That is the extender where all the data is collected and provided to the top layer for the compute. And everything should be connected to, let's say, the cloud to have the data there. You see this in these DevOps loops. So it will be more and more important that we bring the data from the vehicle to the cloud and back. And we learn also from the operation of our vehicle. Everything currently not available at OEMs, but if we would like to go for STV, and that's a clear request, we need to enable that kind of 
layering of data, bring data on a top level where we make then functionality out of it, but also bring data out of the car. And therefore, we need a good and a performant network. And that's why we are here. Here you see the picture, left hand side, quite easy. In the middle, we have these compute boxes. And then we talk about currently about four ECUs in the back, in the, uh, in the rear, in the front, left, right, where we have all these nice little sensors and motors connected and all the legacy stuff that we need for a car to drive, the charging functionality, also the e-sound functionality, that's all located in these ECUs. And in the middle, we have the, this vehicle integration platform or the compute. That's the point where all the sensor data will be collected, connected to the cloud and processed. And that is here, again, left-hand side, you see the, the picture, how it looks in the car. And that's again the architectural diagram. On the lower side, we still have can lin interfaces, but also here we have first ethernet connections to the zonal ECUs. You will see some of these ECUs at our booth. And then we have the backbone to the compute layer and the cloud. That is the true north. And that is the target. We discuss a lot of topics, uh, let's say, how this Ethernet backbone has to look like. Because also very clear, visible. If this backbone does not work, the complete functionality of the car will break down. So the heart of the functionality comes at the end with that layer and with the data transport protocols that we have on that layer and with the functionality that we, let's say, uh, put into that layer to bring the data from the lowest sensor levels up to the vehicle. Currently, no solution available, so it's starting point. But as I said, that's core, and without that functionality, it will never be really a SDV solution at the moment. Therefore, I would like to go now into these four areas. I will only touch them because that is what I said, framing. So that is, let's say, the speeches you will have today. Tomorrow, I also, in preparation, I heard there's a lot of arguing. There are various solutions available, a lot of discussions on each of these topics, but it's important that we find solutions on them. I'd like to start with data and services. Data and services. As said, for SDV, car, it's important to have all the data or most data available at this layer to enable the compute. If we do not manage this, we will never be able to learn from a vehicle. We will never be able really to make at the end some kind of um, decoupling of the vehicle and the functionality. Also this, this dream of a, let's say, um, a release, so a functional release without driving with the car around is only possible if I am owning the raw data of the vehicle and the driving. So it means we have to find solutions to bring the existing CAN, LIN, also Ethernet sensors and sensor data up to a level where we can have an abstraction that we, let's say, can here on top have the UX functional bundling of services and so on, and theoretically can cut here the whole, let's say, um, functionality from the vehicle, and you can move the functionality from each vehicle to another. So it will be really at this point then possible if you have the data streams available with all the timestamps, everything, you do not have to drive with your car for make a release. It's just if you have the record of the data, you can re release your function virtually. And that would be, especially for ADAS functionality, the core. And if we think about artificial intelligence, it's also important to have the data here, to bring the data out of the car, to gather the data and learn out of this data. Currently, it's impossible, since the data is not for us, let's say, recorded, to have special AI outside of the vehicle. So then come to the uh, to this uh, let's say discussion point first hot discussion point which layer do we do we take for making uh, a signal to service conversion 
First feedback is there are several options available, whether we do it on the low level, mid level, here on the soul level, or bring it up to the highest level. None of the solutions is wrong. That is the good message. So I know there are solutions at the market or fans of a solution to have the signal to service conversion at the lowest level. That's a good solution. It works today. But the disadvantage is if you do this, you will never get data out of this, uh, let's say, um, sensor or data. And it's, it's, it's not that easy to make bundling of services, of several services and several data streams. So all the software functionality is blocked if you do this on the lowest level. Next possibility is to put it on the, on the second level, at the solar level. Therefore, you have already multiple data streams. You can already arrange complex services. So it would be a good approach and will be also, let's say, a layer where this uh, signal-to-service conversion can happen. But most likely, this layer won't have enough processing power. This layer is there for data collection, but not for data processing. So our target should be really to put this on the highest layer. Because if we put that signal-to-service collection on the highest layer, we can bundle services. We can give the software colleagues the chance really to, let's say, invent new services to learn from the data. And also, we can put the signals and the data out of the car. And therefore, to make this happen, that is exactly why we are here. We need some kind of transport, transport protocol. We need um, high efficient data um, multiplexing, demultiplexing on Ethernet lines. We need all the things that we, that we have in the discussion with the 17-2020 discussion for deterministic encapsulation of data, tunneling of data, and that's the core we need to come to that option three solution. So then next topic is the hardware acceleration and the routing. Um, simple statement here again from the nodes, from the sensor nodes via different channels to the ECUs, to the solar ECUs with some tunneling up to the vehicle computer. And therefore we need hardware devices that supports 17, 20, 20 functionality for handling the data streets, uh, streams that we have. So we need chips with hardware support for decapsulation of streaming data, and we need this on the top layer for the processing and routing, but also on the middle layer for really making the data being transported and transparent to the top layer without involvement of software. Message is clear, this, uh, these ICs have to be, let's say, developed. We have first samples available, 2023. So means that whole story can work 2028 in mass production. So it's today, we have the chance, or we see clear, there will be market introduction in, let's say, five years from now on possible. If we finalize all the things that we need really to start an automotive serial development. Beside the hardware, that is the other topic, the hardware doesn't help much if we do not have the right software solution. And therefore, I'm also happy that we are on a good way for Autosar. So Autosar is one of the, let's say, standards that we all have and that we all share globally. I know there's a big discussion about the future of Autosar, whether it's the right uh, approach or whether uh, there will be big changes, especially for the, automotive, uh, for the adaptive side. But for the classic side, it's the best thing we have. And it's in all cars. And we have a living standardization organization taking care also for introduction of this IEEE 17-20-20 transfer protocol. So in this, I'm happy that, that it will be introduced at least the first mechanisms uh, end of this year, but also within this concept group 710, we need to have additional functionality like the zero copy ethernet driver and also the deterministic com uh, communication uh, within that core functionality that is standardized. Once we have the standardization ready, then we can make sure with the AutoSAR core, the right hardware, we are at the starting point, really, for making 
reliable connections, reliable means over years of maintenance. Then we are in the automotive world, we have the chance to have the mass production and have solutions that are maintained, software and hardware over these 15 years, 20 years, whatever is required. Good thing is for classic auto star, we have solutions, so means controller side, we are safe. Bad thing is we have also the adaptive side of AutoSAR means the software stack that is running on the processor side and therefore we are only at the starting point. Now I have one wish to all of you, please set up some kind of a team or consortium like the 710 to define the same for the adaptive side like you have done it in the classic side. Because we need to have since these two worlds are every time together, we need to have the same mechaniz mechanism to tunnel data, to have a, a, a communication protocol, how to pack the data on our Ethernet streaming uh, formats, and this has to be standardized. Otherwise, we will have solutions, perfect solutions for the classic side, but when we come to the processor side and really interacting with the data, then we are again at the proprietary side means everybody tries to involve the wheel uh, or try to reinvent the wheel and this is let's say a dead end so clear wish please start the activity on this so let come to configuration flexibility that is now a special topic that's uh, now we have talked a lot about um, controllers we talked about functionalities but um, Important is also that we can configure the network. Co configuring the network or the configuration of network means really the switches and the components that we have. And by now or until today we have here on the, on the bottom side, we have, let's say, vendor specific solutions. Yes, there are configuration tools. Yes, there are drivers. Yes, it works. But for each and every chipset and vendor, we have different solutions available means we have tons of tools and we need to have here on top some kind of a generic interface that makes us possible industry-wide to configure the automotive network. Really to have a standardized module that also has to come or has to be defined by this group to make it possible for the application developer to really configure the needs for the network that configures then the switches and not only a single switch but the complete network in the vehicle. Therefore it has to be standardized and has to be populated to each ECU in the car. So three main components, one is coming from these, these uh, people sitting in the round but also the other ones so means uh, the drivers below also from the chip suppliers please team up to have such a stack to really make switches standardized, configurable within automotive. Here you see the complete picture. As said, it must be configured not only in a single ECU, it must be in a single ECU configured via the application, but also it must be configured within the complete car line and therefore you need to have tools, you need to have standardized tools and you have to, have to uh, be sure, you have to have the hardware components for sure. And uh, also that is then the last bullet point or missing point. You have then to have tools for simulation of the network. Currently we are not capable to simulate such kind of networks. We are not capable for configuring such networks in a standardized way. It's all unique solutions and with such a setup we will never scale for automotive. So that brings me now to the last bullet point or missing puzzle piece. Now we discussed about what is the need to bring the data up. We discussed about, let's say, what is the, the, the connection, what is the hardware requirements, what is needed as standardized software, how to configure switch, switches. But it all does not help if we do not have a proper planning for the network and the usage of the network. Currently, networks are developed in automotive, I would say, um, they're over design, let's say this way. So it's a try and error. Uh, there is not that much um, common net design tools available. Each and every OEM is doing it on its own or with a special tool set. So we need to have really, we have to put in from the first, from the very first beginning, 
the system design and the network planning. So what is really needed from bandwidth perspective? What is the application needed? And how is the network to be configured? That's the first two points that is currently, I would say, at least from Bosch perspective or Bosch side, it's, it's more, let's say, individual solution in each car line and try and error. This we have to standardize or we have to set up tool chains that are performant. And then the next step is, at the end of the day, once we plan the network, it's important that we simulate it and that we have automated configurations. Therefore, we have also a lot of handmade tools, glue code, to have early simulations and also have manual configurations, but it really has to be a closed loop from the first point to at least this layer. And then, for sure, since the simulation will never be as good as, as the real world, there has to be a hardware system or part of the system available where we can measure real world and debug it and feed it then back again. So it's it's an iterative approach, planning, configuration, testing, feeding back. And at the end of the day, it looks like this. We need such kind of setups. And we really have to make sure that on this side, we know from the application software for on vehicle level, what is the needed network capacity that we can configure or simulate switches, bandwidth, delay times, whatever. Uh, and have a recouple to a, or a coupling to a real world system to feed it back. Because we need, and that is also again, it's automotive. It has to be stable and it has to be secure. We need to have the corner cases. There is no failure allowed, especially when we think about on the lower level. We have all the data available on the lower level and if we have here issues with delay times or missing data, the high-level functions like automated driving won't work anymore. And currently, at least from Bosch side, we can do this manually, but uh, as said, it's not standardized and no tools available for going in real mass production. So, to sum it up, having the goal of SDV in mind, and this will come we will have centralized architecture. So there will be a disruption within the next five years uh, on the complete EE architectures of the cars. We have to make sure that we have realized this, this functional um, differentiation on the right level. So where do we make services out of the data that we have? We say on the highest possible level because then we have the most flexibility for the software engineers, but to realize this, we need to have this protocol system uh, automotive ready to have deterministic data on the highest level. For the hardware, we have the samples available, so we are the good way. Means we are ready to start from software asset. Autosar is now ready, end of the year, adaptive, or at least the classic side, adaptive has to come. From the configuration, there are a lot of discussions and uh, happy or uh, I, I expect the decision whether it's uh, a Yang model or whether it's, uh, it's Autostar approach, but it, hopefully we will have also here a solution uh, within this year. And at the end of the day, it all ends with configuration, simulation. Tools are there, glue code is there, puzzle pieces are there, but we have really to align to bring it together to have at the end really a system where we can simulate the network and really have a clear picture whether the network is stable on the use cases or not. And also the application engineers, by having such kind of simu simulation tools, s make up their mind on the network capacity they really need. Currently they said, I need maximum bandwidth, whatever throughput. They have not in mind to really plan the data they need and what the application needs as let's say, cap needed capacity, quality of service from the network. And with that words, I would like to start now the Tech Day, to have all the deep dive sessions. So for my presentation was only framing the whole topic. And I wish you all the best and have fun. And with that words, I would like to hand over to Thomas again. Thank you.